I can't believe what I'm reading. I wanted to make a video on it because it's just so funny. And sometimes I like to just rant. So, let me preface this by saying that if this is really going on, I feel bad for the dude. Or if it's like, good lord, I'm putting my foot in my mouth and probably going to get canceled in 20 years for this. Probably somebody who's mentally ill and just thinks this is happening and it's really not. Because I, holy crap, do I, I doubt this. So, let's start with this straight up first post. Because, first of all, it's a flip three. This is not happening on a flip three, I guarantee you that. So far, he has deleted all the bookmarks that I have saved from the site. The phone RCS doesn't work anymore. They can listen to phone calls and terminate them and spoof incoming calls. I sent one phone to Samsung to be reviewed at the end of three weeks. Review, they sent me a check for the phone and I bought another one from AT&T. I still have this problem. So I would appreciate if someone could give me some direction for this Flip 3. I like the phone. I am an engineer and designed a few devices using ESP32s, so I know how to flash. I just need to lock this phone down and we'll deal with the computer problem later. Oh my god. Okay. Yes, exploits exist. Probably at government state ran hacker level. Let's get this right off the bat. Nobody is listening to this guy through his phone. Nobody's stealing his text messages. The phone RCS, that was probably a bug in Android. Uh, deleting your bookmarks, they probably hacked your Google account. You probably had a password that was like password123 exclamation point. Um, we can listen to phone calls and terminate them and spoof my incoming calls. That just sounds like you are paranoid about robocalls or telemarketers that we all get every day because the phone calls are spoofed phone numbers. That's a telemarketer phone call. I uh, sent it to Samsung at the end of a three-week review. They sent a check for the phone. No, they didn't. Samsung is not going to just send you a check. Samsung does not just send money to people. And I bought another one from AT&T and I still have this problem. Samsung is not going to just send you a check. They're not going to send you pointless money. Um, they are going to send you another phone themselves or just send you the phone back. Um, it's a flip three, so I think there's ways to bootload or unlock and do all that stuff. But infections across m multiple platforms... Almost unheard of. What did Samsung find? It isn't an infection. They're exploiting both devices. I run Norton 360 on both systems. There's your first mistake. It only slowed them down, and they are 24-7 on me like XNSA. Oh, my God, you're one of these. I dealt with one of these at work recently. They haven't stolen anything, but they are malicious. Samsung never said... The only thing that they said is to buy a different phone. No, they didn't. AT&T has an open fraud case because they saw the tag phone and I changed the phone number several old times like some drug dealer with different SIM cards. Oh, this is like reading the script of a bad hacker movie. Um... No, Samsung, again, did not send you a check or tell you to buy another phone. They did not do that. AT&T probably has an open fraud case on you because you're just paranoid about telemarketer phone calls. Telemarketers do sometimes know some information about you, but there's no ex-NSA-style person just monitoring a normal person 24-7. I know these people exist, and I know there are people out there that probably are monitored. 24 7 but norton 360 is your first is the biggest mistake of all of this first of all 
antivirus on an Android phone doesn't work. It does not work. There is no such thing as working antivirus on an Android phone. All it does is scan your like internal storage. If you download and try to sideload an app, it will tell you that the app is bad. Okay. Um, and then from there, it'll just sit there and not really be of any importance. It'll try to scan apps as you install them, but unless you give an antivirus software some form of root access, it's not doing anything further. So if for some weird, rare reason, something got into this guy's phone, it would have exploited some form of live root access to plant a file someplace that an antivirus app anyway cannot find. Now, I'm not saying that this isn't impossible. I have actually seen this with my own eyes in person. I had a lady come into Office Max one day, super paranoid. And at first, in the back of my mind, I was just like, wow, you're just a paranoid schizophrenic or something, which, you know, I get it. Mentally ill people are out there. I'm not going to be, you know, I'm not going to judge against them or whatever. But. She proved it to me that her email was being monitored, that her phone was being monitored, that her computer was being monitored. She didn't. Well, OK, not her computer, but I had to assume she was telling the truth by the time we were done talking. Um, her phone was uh, a Google Pixel. She sent me a text message from her phone. She typed it out right in front of me, had me watching the screen. She sent it to me. And when I got the text message, it was actually different. At the bottom of the text, there was added text. And I don't remember what it said, but it was just, I think it was just random letters and numbers. And it was not like she didn't have a signature set up, but her text message was literally modified. And then she tried to send a group text because she had her daughter with her. And the group text, she sent it to me and she sent it to her daughter. I got a different text message than her daughter. And then she sent another one. Then her daughter got a different message than I got. It was a really confusing situation. Then she even tried to send me an email and the email was different than the one she sent. No signature enabled. It was a weird situation. And I don't, maybe she was being monitored. Well, not monitored, but she had some sort of virus or something on her phone. But I feel like I am in the movie Enemy of the State, except I am Will Smith and Gene Hackman rolled it up into one. That's a movie I've never watched. I'll be honest with you, and I probably should. But AT&T has an open fraud case on you or them. Did malicious things? Losing bookmarks is pretty common and usually has nothing to do with being hacked. True. If anything, Google is terrible. Terrible at backing up your information the best hands-down ecosystem out there currently is apple's icloud hands down the best thing out there backing up your bookmarks and all that yes you can enable to have your bookmarks you know backed up with google and i think it is auto enabled um but man there are so many bookmarks missing between my google chrome and my mobile Google Chrome. I'll make a bookmark on my mobile phone and it won't show up. Or sometimes it will. Or sometimes... I meh. Nightmare. Anyway. Uh, change Google account and password. Yeah. Duh. Simple. Uh, reset all other accounts the same way to avoid... Or same way on a clean Android. Allow no one physical access to the device. And most importantly, be careful what you install and download. Most users don't need a hacker to stalk them. They do it themselves carelessly in by careless installs and downloads. I'll remind you that XDA is a site filled with hackers, but we're all mostly peaceful. Very true. So this guy does give, so far, the best information in this thread. Honestly, the, yeah, it's, the bookmarks could have been lost. The bookmarks could have been deleted by somebody who did get access to the Google account. Look at what happened to my YouTube channel a couple months ago. Uh, change your Google account and password. Yeah, duh. Change to a different phone and see what happens if you don't install anything. Um, I'm sorry for your troubles. Most days hacking isn't needed. Really, to get into someone's account these days, you need to have personal information, which is freely given on social media and whatnot. 
It should get with Google and do a massive security check, change passwords, and turn on 2FA, the whole swizzle. Swizzle. I'm going to start using that word. That word. If all else fails, create a new account completely separate from the affected account and start fresh. True. Um, let's see. I opened the fraud case. Okay. Uh, they provided the documentation. This has been going on since last year. There was a white paper that came out in November, how the media player was being used to hack in. Uh, I deal with this problem every day. One would think they would give up. I have another 20 computers in my office that I am replacing once I get my end under control. Okay, what is this white paper he's talking about? Samsung eight paper media player. Samsung releases white paper on radio access network VRAN. Samsung Electronics Today released the second edition of Virtualized Radio Access Network white paper highlighting the components and benefits of VRAN and how it can help maximize efficiencies in operator networks. Nah, nah, nah. 2012, earlier this year. VRAN hardware. Okay, this has, this has nothing to do with it. That doesn't mean you're being monitored. Uh, no. <laughs> Just no. Um, let's read the rest of this because I want to go through this whole thread because it's kind of funny. Um, hmm. Maybe move all of your info to a new account, make the new account on a different IP address. So like have a friend make it maybe because from my understanding, the hacker finds you even on a new phone, delete the account accounts that are being hacked. And I don't know what else really delete the apps that are being infected. Purge everything from everywhere and start fresh. Honestly, Norton and other programs for virus protection aren't really helpful anymore. True. I do not see a point in using them when Microsoft does a great job just on their own. It's possible that it could be the cause. Most of the time, antivirus programs that aren't a part of the main OS are the problem. Norton 360 is so bad. Does every, did everybody forget that Norton had their entire source code hacked and stolen from them in like 2009? Uh, also another note, anything with a Snapdragon and made for the US is locked down, meaning no flashing, no anything. Best bet for a, a device is find a good old phone that has a lot of support and flashing. So get a Google Pixel. Um, if you go below Android 9, you will indeed Introduce yourself to a slew of high-risk vulnerabilities, including some of the worst root kits. Very true. If you're really concerned, use the latest version of Android 12 with four fully ad active scoped storage and the mess that it is. Yeah, it's terrible. Um, in general, don't use Wi-Fi on Androids. Keep Bluetooth off if not using it. Install only vetted apps. Scan with online virus total. That doesn't do anything. Um, keep all downloads in the download folder until vetted. Scripted malware, JPEGs, PNGs are real and may evade conventional detections. If they get into a database, they will raise hell until deleted. Open all JPEGs in download folders being for transferring them and checked, check for changes in that folder. <sighs> I don't know. Um, keep all emails in the cloud. That's where they are anyway. Avoid downloading any attachments unless absolutely necessary. Uh, that, not, mm. If malware is suspected, delete it or factory reset within two hours. Reset passwords. Yeah. Time stagger backups so they don't all get infected. Backup redundantly to two or more hard drives that are physically and electronically isolated from each other. Use only a known clean PC to access those backups. Cross-platform malware jumping is rare. Cross-drive jumping is not. Uh, anything can be carried. Uh, we have proof of that alone. I don't know an Ivan. Anyway, um... Proof of that is known simply because you can do things on Android. For example, 
example, there's the flashable Kali Linux for Android. Uh, that allows you to do bad USB attacks, that allows you to do a lot of Wi-Fi attacks, that allows you to do a whole bunch of stuff, and you can just store it right on the storage of Android, and then just send it from the USB port. So, it's not that rare. Doing it from Android to Windows, you could just simply write an app that detects what it's plugged into, and then from there, send the appropriate file. But again, none of this sounds real. There's no way. This guy just sounds paranoid. Unheard of? Absolutely not. Rare on a cell phone, maybe. I don't know. I don't know, really, but it is possible, especially if OP pissed off the government. <sighs> All right, let's read this Twisted Umbrella Recognized Developer Post. I want to bang my head into this microphone. When it comes time to switch to a new phone, ATT should be moving you to a new account with a fresh SIM. Don't transfer anything, install anything you had fresh, and set it up fresh. If they are giving you a new SIM or attaching the f new phone to the same account and someone gained access to the account, they're still being fed every new number and IMEI. Okay, yeah, true. At first, I thought this was going to be a funny post, but that's actually a good response if this is really going on. Because somebody can be in the account and be getting the IMEI and doing SIM jacking. That's a very simple thing that does exist. SIM jacking is easy. To be honest, if you're really good at social engineering, you can SIM jack very easily. Um, as for pictures and stuff, get a USB C compatible hard drive, or you can just get a USB C to USB A converter. Uh, move it to that, make sure your virus scanner on the computer is updated, and either yank the LAN cable or turn off the router before connecting and scanning it. A lot of these virus scanners, the only problem with that is they require internet to check an updated database or connect to a database to check for the vulnerable files, or the uh, detectable files. Uh, once it's clean, connect the drive to a new phone and not the computer. Sounds like someone cloned your ESN and SIM based on what they were doing. So yeah, that's what I was talking about, SIM jacking. Synced items could be manipulated through a PC hack and one good run of the right software with your phone on the same network made it a phone issue. I doubt that. Oh, and if they didn't or don't already do it. Make sure AT&T logs your previous devices, lost or stolen, to blacklist the IMEI. That doesn't do anything. Let me be honest with you. Working in the tech industry, that does not do anything. Marking a device as blacklisted means nothing. We got an iPad Air 2 in at work today. And here's exactly how it went. We got an iPad Air in, uh, 2 in at work today. We bought it from a customer. And it was blacklisted for its cellular data. So you can't use it on cellular. You want to do the first thing I did? Contacted a friend who lives in Ecuador. Hey, you want to buy this? Because it'll work there. Just because it's blacklisted doesn't mean it doesn't work on cellular. It just means that all the companies combined in a certain location auto-detect that it shouldn't be used because of not being paid for or paid off. So... Blacklisting a device means nothing. Uh, to blacklist the IMEI, that should also make a clone useless for as long as it's a clone. Ah, okay. And if somebody is doing this, it doesn't matter. You can change an IMEI. I proved it with my LG Wing videos that you can change an IMEI. If you are suspecting a hack, then report Samsung members app, get help, error report ASAP for them. <laughs> Issue team. Yeah, they're not going to do anything. If you download malware files, a PC is susceptible to yes, but generally an infection on an Android doesn't cross-platform infect a PC. It can who knows how far they're pushing this stuff lately. It's important to nip any malware in the bud and 
to isolate that device immediately to limit damage. Any device with malware that I can't eradicate completely within one to two hours gets nuked. Data in all factory reset data is restored then via offline backups. What if the file, hear me out, what if the infected stuff is in your offline backup, my guy? I had that happen uh, a couple years back. I'm not going to name names, Kennard. Uh, <laughs> a couple years back, somebody from the 1320 uh, community sent me some files to be backed up. And we didn't know that the some of the 1320 challenge files, the runme.exe for 1320 APOC always flashed up uh, antivirus because it was an injector. So it was naturally going to do that. But because of that, it makes it an easy target. Oh, it flashes up antivirus, whatever. We'll just ignore it because it's safe. Makes it easy because if people know to ignore it because of the type of program it is, they're going to ignore it which means you can pile stuff on top of it and they're going to ignore it. So they're the easiest way to Im infect computers, especially with people in the game hacking and modding scene, especially on a computer. Oh my God, it's so easy. The easiest way is to just pack stuff on top of files that people already know to ignore their antivirus and they're just going to blindly do it. My PC never has internet access. That's one less huge fact vector for infection then how are you on xda my guy probably on their phone even then my backup data drives are isolated from my pc unless in use multi-layered security mr blackcock you are another nut job if the dod aec fbi etc are interested in you they're not You'll never, this guy wouldn't be able to post on XDA about the problem if the DOD, AEC, FBI, NSA, whoever was tracking him. You'll never know it until, unless they want you to know. When on stakeout, they always operate in teams. One team is high exposure to gain maximum information and may be detected, but a second Picket fence approach team is already in place if the primary team is exposed. What sci-fi movie did you get that info from? Tell me. Fun fact. Field FBI agents blend in. Can be wearing blue jeans, orange vest, three-piece, anything but low-key and drive mid-range priced cars that are slightly dirty. The way you ID them is by their behavior and at times location. If you're not on their menu, they may even have a benign, friendly conversation with you. They are interesting to chat with. I want to bang my head into my desk. Some people, man. Um, I, I'm not even going to dig through that. Oh. An app from the op uh, thingy by OP. Okay, okay, okay. There is an app on the phone, com.qualcom.atfwd, that is, is that a valid program for this phone? Yes, it's from Qualcomm. It's, yeah, like uh, Twisted said, it's a Wi-Fi screening, uh, Wi-Fi screen mirroring app. I got my old CDMA phone up on T-Mobile. I had the data turned off because it was useless to me. Came back home and I saw the two forks moving. The data was turned on and Norton firewall blocked entry and I had the Wi-Fi in airplane mode on the computer. Now I have skills the average person would never know. <laughs> Doubt it. Um, this is why I need a phone that I can lock down. Jesus Christ, no. <sighs> I believe it started with the phone, and then I used Samsung PC software, which hacked the computer that I used. I have all 25 zip files from one phone before it got a chance to load anybody interested in them. Phone has 422 files installed. It definitely has more than that. There is way more than 422 things on your phone. <laughs> This is one of those times I wish I had face cam, but my face is ugly. Oh, Jesus Christ. Interested in potentially infected files? 
Want to do malware JPEG swap? Seriously, scan them with online virus tool. Yeah. I guess that could start over as a last resort. The funny thing is, I don't do anything illegal. Whoever it is will be wasting time and costing me time. I am sure they are getting screenshots, but I don't think that they do it to live. Do it live. Sorry. We're doing it live. On the PC, I have zeroed out the drive, but the BIOS is another way. It started when I backed up the phone using different computers on my network. Oh, we got the other nut, nut job. Hold on. Is the router updated and secured? Lock it down even if you need help to set it up. On the PC, you should try to ID what that malware is. I've realized I read like a four-year-old. And make sure the databases are clean. Clean of it before reloading. <laughs> this guy doesn't know how to speak English either, so that's why I consider him pretty stupid. Protect all backup drives until the PC is known to be clean. The BIOS can be easily reflashed. Yeah. Yeah. Where can I find either a factory file or one without all the extra apps? Good luck, my guy. I ran virus total and under the system apps, there are AR emoji, AR doodle, etc. Others that aren't okay. They're totally okay. They're normal. If you don't want them, don't use them. I think none of the, these files were on the very first phone. They can't be removed using virus total. Duh, because virus total doesn't delete things. It just scans it. Can I remove them? The AR emoji has red highlights for location, camera, record audio. Yeah. It's two of my cars are messed up now. The dealer keeps flashing them and they revert back. Uh, <laughs> everything in this guy's life is just iRobot. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Ah, oh, come on. I need more posts like this. I want to do more videos like this because... <laughs> Oh, God. You know who I feel like right now reading through this post and just talking through it and laughing? Uh, uh, some ordinary gamers. Oh, man. I love watching that guy. The AR emoji and his red highlights. And my cars are messing. No, mm. These are harmless system apps. If in their factory versions, you can disable them using ADB edit editing app. Or package disabler pro reverting back to what? What's reverting back? My two cars GPS maps. I think this phone causes the problem. This is an older version, probably of AR Doodles APK on my Note 10 Plus running on Pi. Just scanned it with virus total and it's clean. Try scan with malware bytes on boot up. Bubble antivirus apps don't do anything. Anyway, update before rebooting. I use my own image for the router. AR Doodle and Emoji are official Samsung apps that integrate with messages. They are managed through Galaxy Store and can be uninstalled slash disabled. They were likely on your previous phone, but only recently became launchable directly. Depending on what his phone was, they probably didn't exist. Does it have access to location and camera, etc.? This man needs a graphene OS phone. CJD. Hmm. The app does re request those permissions, but you can deny it. Go to settings, apps, air doodle permissions. In my case, it says no permissions required under it because I've never used it. So yours should also select the permission and choose don't allow. Of course, the camp permission part of its functionality and the location Permission is just something annoying Samsung does on most of its apps. If it's the factory loaded version, it's clean. What Android version is on the phone? If Pi or higher, it's immune to the worst rootkits that can worm past user data partitions. If lower, well, that could be the problem. It's a flip three. 
it's not on anything lower than Pi. <laughs> I don't think it's lower than Android 11. Anyway. I hate this. What would prevent RCS from working? Both Samsung and AT&T remoted in and never found the problem. So I am limited to one megabit, one megabyte messages. Could use the Google Messenger, but I find the Samsung is a better app. Yeah, Google's standard text messaging app kind of sucks. So this guy, like Blackhawk is about to say, advanced messaging is probably turned off. I know on my phone, I almost picked up my new OnePlus that I was supposed to make a video on today, but I'm not. I use the app called Textra. If I go to settings, I can go to MMS, carrier send limit. I can do carrier has no limit with a push of a button. And that should allow for larger text message attachment files. Also, AT&T never remoted into your phone and neither did Samsung. Thanks. Use this mod to block ads globally in some blacklisted sites. Well, that kind of works. Advanced messaging not working. Seems like one of the two would have told you that already, though. Could be related to someone hijacking your phone. But it's on you if you want to open up new opportunities for them to mess with you before getting it sorted out. I found one leak. The Samsung account was set to developer mode. I couldn't change it, so I deleted the account. Only one reading through this entire post and just thinking that this is some hilarious troll. I'm not going to comment that. I'm just going to let this guy think about what he's doing. <sighs> I I couldn't resist making a video about this thread. This guy's not being monitored. This guy's not tech literate in the slightest. Yeah, he knows some of the fancy words. Uh, I I don't know. <laughs> Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think is going on with this guy? Do you think he's just tech illiterate and maybe just paranoid? To be honest, and I'll feel bad. Uh, I feel bad for people that are like this, but maybe some form of mental illness, like schizophrenia or something like that? I don't know, man. Like, yeah, there are people that get monitored. Uh, let me look. Open Spotify.com. So I listen to this podcast a lot, the Ohio podcast. I listen to these guys all the time. Um, I don't remember what episode it was. It was a long time back. It was an interview with somebody who believed that they were being monitored by the cop or monitored by the U S government constantly. And Stories of people too scared to share because they won't believe them. Oh, okay, that's nothing. Not it. Uh, I don't remember what that episode was called. Man, I wish I did. So the guy believed that he was being monitored by the government, and he did actually have some proof, but at the same time, he was also a little out there. This is a great episode. If you want a new podcast, look this episode up. The ATF Undercover Special Agent. Great episode, but I don't remember what that episode was called. Targeted individuals. It was this one. Uh, he. It's called gang stalking, or and you're basically a targeted individual. And like some of the stuff he talked about, I can believe. Um, the guy in this video or this, uh, podcast episode, the dark vault targeted individual. Some of the stuff I do believe because of dealing with that lady at office max a couple years ago with her phone being monitored and like the things being messed with as it was being sent out or whatever. 
But again, it's just SIM jacking at that point. Somebody just had a copy of her SIM card and they were gaining access to her text messages or phone calls that way. Or they also had access to maybe her Google account or something. I don't know. But this guy on XDA, I believe, is just nuts. Um, it's a weird world we live in. I will forever admit when I'm wrong. I'm always the type that's going to do that. And I will always tell the truth of something that happened. And like the proof of that alone is in the 1320 challenge history. I mean, look at the, you can look up the article that I typed on my own website about what happened with 1320 challenge and all the infos there. I didn't hide anything. So at this point, I really, I don't know. I don't think this guy's being tracked. I don't think he's uh, being actively hacked and monitored. I kind of want to comment here just to like stay up to date with it. <laughs> but I don't think this guy's being monitored or anything. I think it's a big load of crap. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. And I did not mean to turn this into a 40 minute video. But this was just too much fun to go through. So I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.